Hey guys, how's it going? It's Luke with Motor Minds, and today we are driving a 1990 Mazda Miata NA, the classic Miata. But even more special than the car is my guest for today. Would you please step in? Oh, shit. Well, never mind. He's not very special. He's just my cousin. Damn it. Hey guys, I'm Riley, and I'm, I'm very honored to be here to get to review this car with you and tell you guys about what it's like and see how this car stacks up 27 years after exactly it this is one ancient car but what we're going to see is is this car still the definitive sports car is it all that it's cracked up to be does it deserve all of the fanboys that it attracts and all the and hype exactly that's what we're going to find out with the styling i really think this car just has a classic look that's never going to get old they really hit the nail on the head because the front end it doesn't have that goofy smile as that understated smile more low down on the front fascia looks really unique i really like the front headlamps very awesome you have these little two strips that you can have for just running lights and then you have your awesome puff up headlamps for when you need the full-on headlight effect when it's dark out, or if you're going to be saluting your fellow Miata mate on the road. They, yeah, they include a little button here right in the center console, right below the hazards, that lets you pop those headlights up without blinding your fellow Miata driver. Exactly. It doesn't turn them on, but it's just a simple, hello Miata driver, I acknowledge you, but it doesn't blind them. Exactly. Moving, moving on to the sides, it's a very classic look. It all is very curvy, it just curves into itself. Very nice. I really like the metal door handles. They feel very high quality, give it a unique touch. And then moving on to the back end, I just think the whole car just swoops together so nicely. It's just a constant curve that engrosses the whole vehicle, looks very clean. And I just think it's a classic look. Yeah, I think they Mazda did an awesome job with the design of this car. They really hit the nail on the head when they brought it out. And like it all kind of loops together well like some cars you'll have a really good front end but then the back end just looks like crap yeah, exactly. and you're like well what's that or maybe you have a good end front end the back end then the side view is just very underwhelming yeah the, 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 the all, styling's yeah. just so unified you yeah know? this whole car just kind of comes together so well exactly and it really captures that classic sports car look where it but it also has its own spin on it like a lot of older sports cars have a lot of straight, like long straight lines that kind of make the car look faster make it feel faster and uh Mazda, they kind of made their own spin on that by giving it a little bit more curviness and just kind of making it a little more special. Exactly, I couldn't agree more. Very good design. Except, like with the second and third generations, I think they took it a bit too far with the front end. Made it look a bit too girly. This one just is straight, gorgeous, very nice to look at, and I think it's never going to get old. It's a timeless design. Yeah, there, yeah, there are reasons why Mazda tried to bring back that classic Miata smile in the later generations. Maybe they didn't get it just right. Exactly. They're trying to recreate the magic with the original. And I really, for the second and third generations especially, I just really don't think the design really spoke to me. It was one of those things where it just looked too girly, a bit too bubbly. I really don't think I would have bought the car because of that. Yeah. This first generation is really um, the style king of the Miatas, in my opinion. Yeah, and after just getting to drive this car and see this, and just be around this car, you kind of see how what Miata was going, uh, what Mazda was going for. And how maybe they're, they didn't quite hit the mark on the later generations because they got it pretty perfect the first time exactly. around. Exactly, it's, it's hard to make magic two times in a row. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about the powertrain of this Miata. It's 27 years old, obviously it's a little outdated, but back in 1989 when this car was released, it was actually pretty technologically advanced. It had dual overhead cams, it's an inline four cylinder, and it puts out 116 horsepower and 100 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, and while that doesn't seem like a lot, this car only weighs 2,100 pounds, which is less than 1,000 kilograms. So even with that little amount of power, it can really go and just have a lot of fun. Yeah, zero to 60 is about eight and a half seconds. And that's aided by the genius five-speed manual that they have in this car. The ratios are super close together. Short gearing makes the most of the little power that you have and it really gives the ability to work this engine for what it has to offer and it honestly is a pretty good amount of fun now this engine sounds pretty awesome when you're revving it out obviously not a whole lot of power but like riley was saying not a whole lot of weight to haul around either especially with our fat asses here it probably slows it down a bit <laughs> yeah. but i mean if you had a if it was just me a spry young man in his prime this thing rocks 
It yeah. is so fast. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what we're talking about the, the gearing and the transmission, the, the throws in the gear shifter are really short and they're a lot of fun. And, exactly. Uh, like, yeah. And it makes it easy to flip between gears and it's a really great mechanical feel to it. And it just makes it easy to throw them in and you know when you've made a gear. And, so you don't know when to let go of the clutch. Exactly. It's one of those things where you can just feel the transmission engage. It just is so nice. It's such short, sweet, direct throws. The clutch is a very short throw, very small um, linear travel. You can't really tell what the engage point is, but that's mainly because this clutch isn't like in the best of shape. It was sitting in their barn for five years, and the pressure plate actually welded shut. So they had to like kind of break, didn't they like rock it on the starter motor to yeah. Yeah. So the clutch could use a little bit of work in this car, but honestly, I hardly even notice it. Yeah. It's honestly even more of a joy to drive than cars that have a more springy clutch because yeah, because you, you don't know when it's engaging, so it makes it easier to start off. So you're not like kind of like trying to tow that engage point to get off. You're just kind of yeah, it's very the clutch and you the car just goes. It's very forgiving. Plus, you can't necessarily feel the engage in this car. It's very easy to just let off the clutch and with the right amount of gas you just go. It's easy to just launch this car. Yeah. Now, lack of power doesn't really tell the whole story on this car. It's about how it drives, it's about how it handles, and that's always been the Miata's party piece. This car, especially being a 1990 model, it didn't even have power steering as standard. It came with full mechanical steering. Now this car has power steering on it, it was an option. But even so, it just handles so well. Very direct, communicative steering. You can feel everything that's going on. The turning is awesome. And it's one of those cars where you have skinny tires, not a lot of power, so you reach the limits fairly early, which makes it a lot more fun to drive than some cars that have a lot of power that you don't know what to do with. It's a very pure driving experience. It's a lot of fun. And I think that's mainly the big um, thing behind the Miata is it's one of those cars you can take out on back or it's really pushing the max. You yeah. Know? And while it doesn't have a lot of straight line speed, like Luke was saying, it has perfect 50 50 weight distribution. Now it's one of the big party pieces that Miata, that Mazda put into this Miata. Exactly. And, and that makes it just such a joy in the corners. It, it just grips so well and having letting the front wheels focus on steering and the back wheels focus on giving the power. Just perfect balance everywhere. Exactly. That really, you can just feel it in the way the car communicates everything to you. It's like it's talking to you. It's like telling you how the road is. It just communicates everything from the front wheels. You can feel the back end start to slide. It's really a very good car to drive. It's a perfect driver's car, in my opinion. If you're looking for a raw, unadulterated driving experience, I, I really think it's yeah. just- Yeah, we're on that note. Why don't we go and talk about some of its features? Yeah, here in the in the, uh, the cabin here, there's not very many uh, creature comforts. Yeah, there's really not. Air conditioning, like Riley was saying, is an option. So, I mean, yeah, you got, that just tells the story right there. Yeah, and you've got manual windows. They didn't yeah, have wind-up windows. They didn't have power windows as an option these back then. And uh, you have a radio in the middle. you got a, your handbrake, real important. you got a center console here, no cup holders. Yeah, there. the new Miata actually has pop-out cup holders. This one's just like, screw you and your beverages. If you're drinking a Coke while you're driving the car, you're not fully focused on the drive, and therefore you're not doing it right. And then over by the driver's side, you got your nice steering wheel, that very, very comfortable steering wheel, that very nice leather wrap, very comfortable to hold and steer with. And uh, you got your indicator stock, your wiper stock, and then you have your, your dials. And that's basically it. Yeah, and wait for this. There's four vents right in the dashboard. They do this magical thing. They blow air yeah. that has been heated or cooled to your liking. It's yeah. really phenomenal. It's yeah. just new, like, second world technology. It's really <laughs> unbelievable. Actually, yeah. I think that's more like third world technology. <laughs> yeah, but, and the, and the stereo system is nothing to write home about, but it gets the job done. And to yeah. be honest, when you're driving this car, you want to have the top down and be listening to that awesome exhaust, exhaust note. Yeah. Oh my God, the exhaust note is awesome in this car. Yeah, so you're not really going to be listening to any radio. Yeah, so it's two speakers. Yeah. It's pretty shit, but I mean, it was 1990. Who cares? Exactly. But yeah, I mean, really, you're not buying this car for the features. The modern yeah. Miatas, they pack it full of stuff like, I mean, you have speakers in the headrest, you have a seven inch display, navigation, touch screen, you have automatic high beam control, you have all this stuff that you don't need. I'm driving this car, I've been driving this car for a couple days, and I don't miss any of the features that I have in the Miata back home, you know? Like, I'm not like, oh, I want my speakers in the headrest, oh, I want my Napa leather seats. It's like, damn, I just want to drive. Like, those features are nice, 
but I mean, they add weight of the car that we have back home. And I mean, Mazda did go crazy to save a lot of weight, but it still weighs 2,300 pounds. And I mean, given the features it has, that's great. But if you think about it, this car still weighs less. So, I mean, there's just something to be said for like weight and minimalism, you know? Yeah. But we're pulling into town now. I've done enough driving. It's time for Riley to hop behind the wheel so we can get his perspective on what this Miata is like to drive. Oh, of course it turns red now. <laughs> Classic. Yeah, guys, the first thing I can say is hopping in the driver's seat here is just a joy. Like, compared to my GTI, like, I, I mean, in that car, I look forward to kind of just hopping in and enjoying the power and everything. This car, I just enjoy the uh, overall experience. This experience altogether. And just, I look forward to hopping in and just getting to drive it. Like, it's just a really exciting car. Like, I'm not looking forward to being able to blast my tunes on the stereo and <laughs> enjoy all those different cool features that they packed jam packed into it i'm just looking forward to getting to drive this thing exactly. and just experience it like these seats are i mean they're they're, they're only, actually pretty damn yeah comfortable they're for what they seats, are but they're just really comfortable they hug you really well they got nice bolstering they're not like huge bolsters that stick out past your like your abdomen there it just it's kind of hug you and you just kind of get to nestle back in there and yeah. relax and exactly it's pretty great and i mean honestly it's pretty practical you have a trunk to store things yeah. i mean you have literally miles and miles of headroom so yeah. if, you're the, if you're a taller guy you fit quite nicely yeah and if you don't mind getting your hair a little messy it exactly. works out I mean, perfectly just, just do what i do cut it short yeah. and <laughs> as long as you're not james may yeah and it gets you that classic windblown look if you're into exactly. that yeah well, totally but i mean it's one of those cars where you don't have a lot of features it's not a lot going on but you hop in and all you do is drive drive and drive and that's really the whole story with this car but the reason that Miata, I mean Mazda made the Miata in the first place was to have a reliable sports car. They designed this car based off of classic British sports cars from the 60s and 70s. Yeah, and the big problem with those older sports cars is that they were, they were jam-packed full of those features that Mazda purposely left out. Because, and that, those both added weight and they made the car more expensive. So those cars had to be extremely powerful in order to carry along all that, those extra feature comforts that they came with. Exactly. Like, think about a lot of cars that were coming out in the 80s. You had cars that were, um, like, let's talk about, like, cars that were like the Porsche 959, or you had um, the, what was it, the 928, and then you had other cars like the Jaguar XJ220. I mean, it was like the era of the supercar, and I feel like a lot of people are getting distracted from the raw driving experience that the Miata provides. This car doesn't have 500 horsepower, it doesn't have a top speed of over 200 miles an hour, but what it does, what it doesn't have, it makes up for with the driving experience because you're not focusing on managing hundreds of horsepower, you're focusing on getting the perfect gear change or perfecting your racing line. But more importantly with Mazda's um, design with the Miata is that it kind of mimics the experience that you got with a classic British sports car from the 60s and 70s without the reliability issues. That's the, that was the big thing. Those cars, you would drive them and they break down all the time. You literally have to carry around the toolbox to be fixing them. Now the Miata, it's Japanese and it's designed like a tank. It will not break. You see plenty of these with over 200,000 miles on them. Yeah, the body of this car will rot away long before the engine dies. Exactly. Like, you'll have, your car will be completely full of rust your engine will still be running great. Yeah. It's really something else. And that's the thing, like, you can buy this car without having to justify it. It's just like, I can have this, it will work all the time, and I won't have to be like, oh, I'm gonna have to change like something every 5,000 miles, or oh, I'm gonna have to spend thousands of dollars replacing a part that's inevitably going to break. Yeah, or like some of those, back then, some of those cars, some, like maybe 50% of them had an engine issue. So maybe that's why this one's so cheap or something. But no, these cars, you see consistent values, depending on like how many miles they've been driven in. Other than that, it's, and they you hold know, the you value know you're getting very well. Yeah, you know what you're getting. Like if you find a decent one and you take care, take care of it, it'll keep its value. And exactly, that's the thing, because these cars have a big following and they're classics. So a car like this, this clean car, 22,754 miles. 54 miles. I mean, that's hardly, that's less than a thousand miles here. You'd probably be paying seven to $8,000 for this car. Because it really is flawless. It's a very, very clean car. Even ones with like 150, 200,000 miles, you'll probably pay two to three grand for one for those. And it's like a 27 year old car. So you really aren't gonna be losing that much money. You can pick one up and thoroughly enjoy it without thinking, oh crap, I'm gonna be burning so much money on this car, you know? It just yeah. works. And that's really, it's a testament to the Mia, yeah. uh, Mazda. 
helps me out a story, you know? Yeah, and just shopping one of these cars is a really different experience just because when you're looking for a, for a lot of other cars, you're like, oh, that one has over 90,000 miles on it. Got to stay away from that. But this one, like, with the reliability, it's something you shouldn't really be scared of. Exactly. I couldn't agree with that more. Now, let's talk a bit about, about, let's talk a little bit about how this car makes you feel. I mean, when I drive this car, it's one of those things where it's the experience over the numbers. This car, it's not very fast, it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. It's not something that you're going to be driving super fast, but the experience makes up for it, wouldn't you agree? I agree completely. Yeah, just this car, like, like I said before, you don't look forward to any of the features or the power. You just look forward to the experience. You look forward to this steering that's just, after 20, even after 27 years, like, little, maybe it's a little, little play, but other than that, it's just... Still telepathic. It's sublime. Yeah, it's just... Like it, it's just incredible. Yeah, you have the awesome gear change, you have the response from a naturally aspirated engine, you have that exhaust note. It all comes together to create an experience that you really can't recreate with any other car, in yeah. my opinion. Like you, but like, don't get me wrong, there are cars out there that are a lot better than the Miata. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that it's a raw experience that will always put a smile on your face and really connect you with what driving's all about. Yeah, and there are reasons why people love the Miata. Exactly. And, like, I'm one of them too. Like, it, des it deserves the following that it gets. And that's yeah. something I wasn't so sure about. I was like, ah, it's a 27-year-old car. It's probably going to be clamped out. It probably won't drive that well. That's not true. Like, it still drives very well. And it gives you an experience that makes it worthy of all the hype that it receives. Yeah. And overall, like, if you're, let's say you want to buy a Miata. Yes, you can go out and buy the new ND edition that has a lot more power. It drives a lot, in my opinion, it drives better. I mean, it's a more modern car, don't get me wrong, but is it worth paying over $30,000 for one of those? That's the thing. When you when you think about the price to enjoyment ratio, new car is like thirty dollars to $35,000 if you get one that's pretty loaded. But if you get one of these, you can probably pick up a good one for like five, seven thousand dollars $7,000, somewhere, somewhere around there. And honestly, driving it around, you're getting probably 90% of the enjoyment that you would get with the new car, but it just doesn't distract you with all the features that you get with the new car. You still get that pure experience. You're going to be smiling just as much. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that really speaks for itself. I'm not saying don't buy the new Miata. We own a new Miata, and I absolutely love it to death. But I'm saying you don't need to spend the money to get the experience that you're looking for. So I think, I think it really just speaks for itself. Yeah.